This is going to be a short tutorial just to go over the 3D aspects of the mesmerized GUIs. So we can open, for example, 3D TIFF files um, just as you would for 2D uh, images. And if your data are not in the form of a TIFF file, you can use the console to open them uh, as well. And there is a dedicated video on how you can open arbitrary images using the console. Um, so for now, um, I will open um, part of a data set that was given to me by uh, Martin Hesmeyer. And the paper that this data set comes from is um, in the description if you're interested. I'm not going to load uh, metadata just to show you how the GUI works. Okay, so this is a 3D two photon zebrafish uh, data set. And just as with 2D image sequences, you can use the timeline down here to move through video and time. And if you have a 3D image sequence, you will see this Z level slider here, which you can use to move through the Z axis. and pretty much the rest of what you can do in the viewer is quite uh, identical to what you can do with uh, 2D image sequences. Um, so in order to show you how you can perform uh, 3D CNMF, I will open the demo image from um, the Cayman uh, 3D demo notebook. would be useful to change the levels here. Okay, I'm going to open the same batch that I used for the main tutorial series. And if you do not know how to use the batch manager, you can take a look at um, tutorial part one and two of the main tutorial playlist. Okay, now I'll open a GUI for parameter entry in order to do 3D CNMF. And I highly recommend taking a look at uh, the main uh, came in papers and at their documentation and their demo notebooks to better understand how uh, 3D CNMF actually works. For now, I will enter parameters which I think are quite similar to their demo notebook. And I think that this is meant to have a sampling rate of 10 hertz. So I'll just enter that using the console. So certain pieces of metadata, such as the sampling rate of your image sequence are necessary for CNMF and for downstream uh, analysis. Okay, let's add this to the batch. One useful feature of the uh, 3D CNMF uh, batch items is that you can use uh, the mem maps of other 3D CNMF batch items. And this is useful because if you have a large uh, data set, such as uh, that zebrafish example, which I had just uh, shown you, you, it will shave off about 10 to 15, well, depending on your system, it can shave off quite a significant amount of um, processing time because you don't have to create the mem map um, for every batch item. So in order to show you how you can do that, click on the batch item that you are interested in reusing the mem map of, and the UUID will be shown down here. So let's copy that UUID and use that same mem map. So now we can add another CNMF 3D 
uh, parameter variant using the same image sequence, and it will use the mem map of the other batch item, which actually uses the same input data. And this way, by using the same mem map, um, the batch manager does not have to spend time recreating uh, the mem map. Let's try changing some parameters just to try and get a difference. Okay, so if we see from this batch item that we just added, it shows that it is going to use the mem map of this item. Okay, let's just try and enter another parameter variant. Okay, let's start this batch and it will take a few minutes. Okay. In the meantime, I'll create a project so that I can add the output of one of these batch items to show you how you can use plot and the data point tracer with 3D imaging data, which is mostly the same as it would be with 2D data. So I'll just create a new project here. I will not add any ROI stimulus or custom columns. And I explain um, in quite some detail how what these columns are for in the main tutorial uh, playlist. So let's just use this for now. Okay, let's take a look at these batch items. All right, let's change the min-max to something appropriate. All right, be useful to have a larger spot size for this actually. So the, R, the way that the ROI manager works with 3D data is uh, quite similar. The only difference of course is that you have this in different planes. And one useful uh, thing that the ROI manager will do it, which, when you have 3D data is you can click on an ROI in the list and it will go to the plane in which that ROI has its center. Okay, let's just take a look at the other items. It's quite similar actually. Let's see what does this one look like? Also very similar. Well, I guess that the number of components found between the three parameter variants isn't too different because this is a simulated uh, data set from um, one of the Cayman demos. All right, I'll just pick this one and add it to the project to show you how you can perform some downstream analysis. Okay, 
So now that's been added to the project. And I mean, as is with the 2D data, you can reopen uh, samples that are added to your project and re-explore or modify them as you wish. Okay, let's open this in a flowchart. And there, uh, the main tutorial series shows you many examples of how to use the flowchart. For now, let's open the project data frame. And let's just take a look at a heat map. Okay, so the main difference um, in plots when you're working with 3D data is that when you click on your um, data points, it will show you a max or standard deviation projection at the uh, plane in which the, that ROI has its center. Other than that, um, the way that plots work is pretty much uh, identical. And you can open this in the viewer through here. And you can look at analysis graphs to see the history of the analysis procedure. So as we can see, this went through 3D CNMF with these parameters and then the transmission was spawned in the flowchart. So th that's basically an overview of how you can uh, work with uh, 3D imaging data. There isn't really too much of a difference with how um, it's handled. Um, it's quite similar to 2D imaging data and if you're interested in more um, detailed uh, analysis examples with what you can do with Mesmerize, you can take a look at the other tutorials and um, they will apply to th 3D data as well.